Hi, and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick, and today, guys, we're going to be jumping down into the world of Bitcoin, taking a look at what's been going on most recently with that price action and what I think is likely to happen next. Now, as I get into today's video, if you do find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications, and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. If you haven't yet joined us in Discord, what are you waiting for? Check it out. Link is in the description down below. It's a fantastic community talking in crypto 24 7 it's completely free and i don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find down there so why not go ahead and check it out let's jump right down into today's video we'll kick things off with the one hour time frame so here we have bitcoin paired up with usdt one hour and binance is our data source as you can see uh, we've been fighting the 50 ema and uh, 50 sma we lost these these were support for us and they became resistance yesterday. Okay, this took us back down to our 200 hourly EMA where we've bounced. We've moved up again towards our 50 EMA. Now, considering our stochastics are overbought and we're up against this previous area of resistance on that 50 EMA, chances are we are going to get rejected here again. I'm still looking at the 200 EMA as a support level. I think we have uh, still got the good support to be found in this range where we are likely to bounce back up. And I do think we'll eventually will get back above the 50 EMA and the 50 SMA that you see there. Now, in terms of our kind of fifth wave expectations, this is going to potentially now be an extension to this. It looks like diagonal is what we're looking for within our fifth wave movement. And we are still targeting out just short of $40,000. So to me, it looks like this is basically now the pivotal moment for um, for, for Bitcoin here. Now, we do want to check just a couple of things. Uh, it's important that we do our due diligence here. You can see that we came down deeper than the 1.236. Uh, sorry, 1.382, in fact. Uh, so this is now leading us down more into a W, X, Y, X, and Z pattern. So we do expect further downside here. Um, also retesting that 200 EMA. Okay, so I don't think we're done just yet, um, but we're getting very, very close before we start our moves to the upside. Okay, we are looking to at least pierce higher than $37,972. Okay, our break of structure here is going to basically B, yeah, right over here. Um, so we cannot drop down lower than uh, 35,984. If we do, we're going to essentially break uh, our structure point, which I think we actually have done. So this is no longer a W, it's no longer um, a five wave pattern by the looks of it. So yeah, we actually are going to have to change our structures to W, X, Y, X, and Z, uh, which is fine. We'll go ahead and just review where that potentially is awry. Uh, yeah, we have the overlap there. So we are going to have to look at this as diagonal. Sorry, yeah, diagonal. Uh, so we can put that back on. It is in fact diagonal when we have another diagonal coming for the fifth wave movement. So that is correct. That is fine. Uh, it does mean, however, we can, of course, move down lower. It's not a problem. Uh, and in here, we can probably move down quite a bit, but we should not breach lower than the wave too low. Uh, so that actually gives us a lot more breathing room at 34,120. So yeah, so for everything else here, it's looking okay. We can still move down, retest that 200 hourly EMA, um, but we are still looking for progression upwards towards $40,000. Um, so taking a look at it from a daily standpoint here, you can kind of see this a little bit clearer. Uh, we are in a diagonal movement, which is why we're allowed the overlap. And we're looking for the fifth wave of this fifth wave, which is a five wave movement in itself. OK, and um, so it can be a little bit complex. Uh, this is why Elliott Wave Theory is uh, usually wrong when you kind of come across it on uh, other influences channels. They don't apply the rules. It's quite a complex set of structures. Um, and if you do apply the rules correctly, it's very, very accurate. Um, but applying the rules correctly can be a challenge, though. OK, so just bear that in mind. Now, as you can see here, I'm tracking this as a three, three, five, a three, three, five is a correct. Uh, flat correction pattern uh, essentially means that we are likely to see reversal. Once we kind of complete this fifth, fifth wave movement up here, uh, up there was that $40,000, I'm expecting it moves to the downside. Um, and we do have uh, in here this fair value gap between $30,000 and $32,000. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how that kind of plays on out. Um, so that fair value gap still sits there. A retracement again, uh, we're heading down towards the 50 EMA, currently sat at $32,000. 50 SMA is sat at $31,000. 
100 and a 200 a daily EMA is sat at 28,000. These are the key areas of support, I think, on our journey to the downside, seeing how price reacts to that. Now, you can see, of course, we have interesting levels around 31,000. We have some more interesting levels around 29 to 30,000. And then, of course, all the way back down here at 25 and 24,000. These are going to be the key areas of support as we start thinking about a correction to the downside. I don't think we're there just yet. Our daily stochastic still has plenty of room to the upside, but our weekly and monthly, on the other hand, are giving us our bearish structures. If we take a look here, you can see an ascending triangular wedge on the weekly time frame. We're overbought on this weekly time frame, and we are up in that upper area of resistance. So ultimately, everything here is looking likely that we are to see further to the downside. And again, our EMAs, are sat at 28, 26, and 26,000. So uh, the 50 EMA is 28,000, the 200 EMA is 26,000, and the 50 SMA is 26,000. Okay, we do have a golden cross here on the weekly time frame as well. Whether that's going to fuel us up towards that $40,000, I don't know. Um, but for the most part, we are likely to see, in my opinion, retracements back down to this previous area of support. Obviously, I speculated about 20 to 21,000 being uh, an interesting point for us to revisit. And ultimately, we have to to lose a lot of those other key areas of support before we get there. But I do think that is something that we have to kind of consider. I'm not talking about new bear market low points here for, for Bitcoin anymore, but I do think a 40% reduction in price is something that we are likely to see. Um, this is going to be driven mainly from bigger macroeconomic uh, issues that we're seeing globally, and uh, not just what you see inside price charts, but just generally, uh, we are not in a great position. And when the Fed pivot, usually that pivot will be cutting the interest rate hikes, right? So we see interest rate hikes over in the US, uh, a pivot essentially means that they're going to basically reduce rates, right? Not a pause, but reduce rates. And when you see that reduction in rates, usually it's when the economy is at its worst point. It's basically, liquidity is being completely sucked out of the market. People are usually having to sell assets to kind of make ends meet, to survive, to pay the bills, and to keep up with a lifestyle that they want to kind of live. And um, so when that rate cut happens, it happens when the market is at its worst. That that means that essentially you're going to see a lot of selling pressure, even though you have the positivity of a rate cut. Uh, or interest rate hikes no longer being a thing. So although I'm expecting a Fed pivot, and that is an incredibly bullish thing, and it's a very positive thing, essentially, that's only really going to be positive news for people who have got you know money on the side and have plenty of dry powder to be throwing at the market during that correction to the downside. Essentially, for all the people who are really struggling, and unfortunately, this is basically retail investors uh, who are really struggling, failing to kind of make ends meet, have the mortgage renewals, mortgage payments that just can't quite meet the, the energy cost, the cost of food, uh, fuel, all of those things mounting up, all those bills mounting up, they have to unfortunately sell assets. And that usually happens uh, just as the Fed are pivoting because it, the market is at its worst. And so what we tend to find is big reductions in the stock market of about 50%. Now, if the stock market corrects by 50%, I imagine that Bitcoin will drop 30 to 40% and altcoins will drop significantly as well. Now, some altcoins I think have bottomed out, some altcoins I think have not bottomed out. And in the case of Bitcoin here, I think we probably have bottomed out with a reduction of 40%, basically just retesting and collecting that 20 to 21,000 CME gap that we see on the daily chart. So I think for the most part, some altcoins will continue to go down into bear market lows. Uh, some altcoins will just retest existing lows. Bitcoin here will retest some interesting key areas. And then I think we're off to the races once that correction has happened. I think all of these things will coincide together. We'll have a Fed pivot. Well, correction in a stock market, correction in Bitcoin, correction in altcoins. We'll then see um, spot ETF approvals uh, happening. Um, maybe that, that'll happen before we see the Fed pivot. Um, but obviously, just an approval happening doesn't necessarily mean you actually have a product to, to actually utilize. I think that's going to be six months out from approval. So I think what you'll end up with is a Bitcoin halving event and a Bitcoin spot ETF all kind of launching at the same time in 2024. Uh, and essentially, I think that will then be the big catalyst for those moves to the upside when they occur. So for now, I kind of look at the market as it's speculated on Bitcoin spot ETFs being, you know, this big driver in the market, but an approval doesn't mean a product is available to utilize. And that does not mean that there's going to be additional liquidity thrown at the market uh, until that product is available. And that product, I don't think will be available until 2024 um, and kind of, you know, maybe 
late quarter two, early quarter three of 2024, meaning that essentially all of this kind of FOMO and trying to get in early potentially could be catastrophic for some of those retail investors who have overstretched themselves. So when it comes to Bitcoin, it's an interesting play. I think we're going to see some pretty decent prices in the market across uh, altcoins, probably not right now. We are talking something that is probably going to happen more towards the end of the year, beginning of next. Um, but for the most part, I think we're in a reasonably good spot. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. I think I'm going to wrap this video up right there. If you have found it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications. And in doing so, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Until the next one, though, guys, have a fantastic day.